Hello, this is Preacher Rick, and we'll see if Facebook will stay on today. Hopefully it will. We had a lot of problems yesterday. If you couldn't find us, I'm sorry. We just couldn't get Facebook to work good. But we finally got it working, and we did get yesterday's sermon in. So thank God for that. Well, we're all the way to the book of Galatians today. It's another letter to the Celtic people that live in Asia Minor. And uh, they were called the Galatian because of where they came from. And anyway, uh, they started out really good. Paul was on his missionary journey, got their church established. And, uh, you know, just one thing led to another. You, you get saved by grace through faith. And I'll read you a little bit of history, maybe to help you as you, as you go and you learn of God's ways. Uh, the Galatians, having launched their, they crossed their Christian experience by faith, and that's how we have to launch our Christian experience. Uh, they they seemed content to leave that experience, and they all of a sudden uh, they had a new course based on works. And boy, it upset the Apostle Paul because God was speaking through him. And he knew that they were they were messing up everything that God was doing for them. And people have a tendency to do that. And so Paul had to write this letter to him in defense of the gospel of faith versus the gospel of works. A lot of people think you have to work your way to heaven. Well, we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. If we could work our way to heaven, the cross would be in vain. Jesus died on the cross because man couldn't make it to heaven. But he died to pay the price for our sins so that we could make it. So we're living in what's called the age of the dispensation of grace. In the book of Galatians, as we read, we're starting in 2.16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, the laws of Moses, what the Jews were practicing in that day, the Pharisees and so on, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. And you know what the Bible says about transgression. It says the ways of a transgressor is hard. For I threw, in verse 19, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, praise his name. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, if we had to live by the law of Moses, then Christ wouldn't have had to die in, on the cross and give us the grace and love that he does. And listen to what Paul said, some strong words to the Galatian people. He said, oh, foolish Galatians, you're being very foolish. And a lot of Christians allow themselves to do some really foolish things. He said, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? The truth is what set us free. And Christ himself even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thank God forever. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law? Is that how you got saved? By, by the work, by working your way to heaven? Or by the hearing of faith? You got saved by hearing a preacher preach about the faith it takes to get saved, didn't you? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You got saved by the Holy Spirit. Do you really think the flesh is going to get you to heaven? In other words, have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore, this is the last verse I'm going to read in this chapter, verse 5 of chapter 3. He therefore that ministereth to you in the Spirit, that would be like I'm doing right now, like Paul was doing then, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by work, the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Of course, we know it's by the hearing of faith. Thank God forever. And as uh, we go through just a couple more verses here and there in the book of Galatians, as we find our way toward the end of the Bible, I want to look 
at a couple of verses that I've mentioned quite a few times. Because we preached all the way through the Old Testament. We called, talked about it being the schoolmaster. And we learned from it how the New Testament works. So listen to what uh, it says in the New Testament about the Old Testament. In verse 24 of chapter 3, it says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. The Old Testament, the Mosaic law, the ways of the Old Testament. To bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. And this is the next verse. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We're not under the Old Testament anymore. Thank God forever we've been set free. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. I say glory for the liberty that Christ gives us. He sets us free. He sanctifies us. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He makes us worthy of His holy presence. Thank God He's still God. Thank God. And as Paul was bringing out the gospel, uh, uh, listen, it was for you and me even today. Uh, it never changes. Uh, uh, just another verse here and there. Uh, on over, uh, uh, listen to uh, what he said. Uh, and it's kind of sad. He said uh, in verse 20 of chapter 4, he said, I desire to be present with you and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Uh, and that's so sad. And a lot of times I know as a pastor and as a preacher, I stand in doubt of people because of the life they're living. And they go to an altar and get saved, whether it be an altar at home or an altar at church or wherever it be, they got saved. But then the next thing you know, they don't seem to be living much of a Christian life or they're building their life on their own works or believing this or believing that. And Paul had to deal with that. He said, I stand in doubt of you. Does that, is that being mean, telling someone you stand in doubt of them? No. He's, he was telling them how much he loved them and he wants them to know the truth and the truth will set them free. Up in verse 16, uh, of that same chapter, he said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Uh, Paul said, Do you really think I'm your enemy uh, because I tell you the truth? Listen, I wouldn't give you uh, 10 cents uh, for someone that would tell me anything that was a lie or, or would guide me into some sugar coated message. Uh, I want to know the truth. Uh, that's what will set us free. Uh, and the truth is that you must come out from amongst them and be a separate people. Uh, and you must be saved by grace through faith. Uh, that you must repent of your sins and be born born again. Thank God. And you must uh, uh, trust the good shepherd to lead uh, uh, you through this whole world. Uh, thank God. And he will. Uh, uh, thank God. The Holy Spirit will come into your heart and guide you into all truth. Uh, uh, thank God to give you a peace that passeth understanding. Uh, do you see where Paul was coming from? Uh, I want to read in the next chapter. Uh, at verse five, Chapter 5 he says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Uh, uh, thank God I'm free. Uh, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Thank God forever I'm free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't allow yourself to be entangled in a yoke of bondage of believing that you can work your way to heaven or you have to do this or you have to do that. When you don't, Jesus already did everything that needs to be done. <clears throat> he said in verse 4, he said, Christ has become of no effect when you do that unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. He said, ye are fallen from grace. Uh, in other words, you've left grace behind and fallen away from it. Uh, how sad is that? Uh, he said in the next verse, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope uh, of righteousness by faith. Uh, I, I know uh, uh, that no matter how many flaws are in me, and I've got plenty of them, and I'm sure you could testify the same. Uh, I wait for God's righteousness at all times. Uh, uh, we're say it's my, my righteousness is as filthy rags of Bible says, uh, I just can't live the good life, uh, but he lives it in me, for me, and through me, and I praise him for it, and I wait upon him daily. Uh, I, I die daily, uh, uh, thank God, and I I give my life to Christ, uh, thank God, and I say, thank you for another day, sanctify me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, uh, make me worthy of your loving and holy presence, and he does, uh, thank God forever. Uh, and then uh, one more little read here, he said, uh, you did run well, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth. Uh, this persuasion cometh not uh, of him that calleth you, not from God. Uh, he said a little leaven of Leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Uh, we know if you put a little leaven in the dough, it leavens the whole lump. Uh, and a little bad teaching, uh, uh, te uh, it just dr it leavens your, all of your, your knowledge and your teachings uh, that you've learned. Uh, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Uh, uh, we need good, sound doctrine uh, 
uh, in our heart. We need to hide it there. Uh, and we need to be strong and overcome evil with good uh, and be uh, happy and zealous uh, uh, for the Lord. Uh, oh, sure. I have to deal with my emotions just like you do. Uh, I have my what we call good days and bad days. Truth is, they're all good just to be alive. Uh, but you know what I mean. Uh, and I have to deal with them. And I only say that because I'm just as human as you and so is every other preacher. Uh, uh, preachers, uh, uh, we're just vessels being used. God uses one for a mouthpiece and another one for uh, uh, feet, another one for arms. Uh, uh, we're the body of Christ. Uh, uh, but He is the head. Uh, uh, thank God forever. Uh, and I'm glad forever. Uh, uh, thank God that I know Him in the pardon and remission of sins. Uh, and I don't want a little bit of leaven. Uh, I say if you see a bad spot in the apple, cut it off and throw it away before it spoils the whole thing. Or a bad apple in the bushel. Uh, throw it out of the bushel to save the other apples. Uh, thank God if someone's teaching you uh, uh, falsely uh, and uh, adding things and putting weights on you, uh, uh, th those weights will burden you down uh, uh, till you'll lose your joy. And when you lose your joy, you lose your strength. Uh, I have found that I need all the strength I can get daily. Uh, and it comes. pardon and remission of sin, uh, and knowing that my name is in the Lamb's book of life, uh, knowing that I've been forgiven for my sins, uh, and God, through His sweet Holy Spirit, will guide me through this life, uh, and comfort me, and help me uh, with my weaknesses. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, living by faith, thank God, in Jesus above. Uh, uh, thank God I know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's by faith in Him, uh, by the grace of God, uh, that I'll make it to heaven, and you will to if you put your faith at the foot of the cross. Jesus loves you. And children, don't let the devil destroy you. He's a liar and a father of it. He will burden you down. He will make you unhappy. Uh, happiness is not always there, even for us Christians, but peace is uh, in our heart. Happiness is a different thing than joy. Happiness, uh, the happenings around you can uh, dictate whether you are having a happy moment or an unhappy moment. Uh, but the the peace that comes from God is something that happiness, whether you have it or not for that moment, can't uh, rob you of. It can't take that peace. And that joy that's unspeakable and full of glory, it comes about, uh, thank God, uh, it, by the, the goodness of God in our hearts. And when we allow that joy to penetrate our hearts and dictate our day, and, and we keep our minds and our affections on the things above uh, we'll find that the, it'll give us strength because our joy is our strength. Our time is up. I hope that this message has helped a lot of you suffering Christians today that are suffering with depression or whatever you're going through. And it's real. Uh, we all, uh, it ranges on the just and the unjust. We all have our battles to face. Whatever you're fighting, whatever you're dealing with, lay it down at the altar, at the foot of the cross. And when you get up, Leave it there. Jesus loves you. He said, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. He loves you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Until tomorrow, this is Preacher Rick. We love you all. Bye-bye.